Well, welcome back. Well, we begin the next session, uh, which is on national overviews. And we had originally slated three talks. I understand uh, one of the presenter is not here, so we'll have two talks. The first talk uh, is by Dr. P.K. Vijayan on Indian nuclear power program, role of thorium and the challenges ahead. Dr. Vijayan is Director, Reactor Design and Development Group. He is a renowned thermal hydraulics expert. His area of expertise is behavior of natural circulation systems, instability of natural circulation, supercritical natural circulation, scaling, and integral behavior of experimental facilities for nuclear reactors. So may I welcome Dr. Vijayan to make his presentation. So good afternoon. I'm going to talk on Indian nuclear power program, role of thorium, and the challenges ahead. Well, this is a brief outline of my talk. I'll begin with the importance of thorium in Indian nuclear power program, and then Indian experience with thorium fuel cycle, and the thorium-based advanced reactors that we are pursuing, and the other thorium systems would also be briefly touched, and then some concluding. Well, as has been told in the morning, thorium has a vital role for India because of its unique resource position with abundant thorium and uh, very modest uh, reserves of uh, uranium. This not only provides greater incentive for large scale use of thorium, but also calls for deployment of thorium much earlier than other countries. The long term program is devised to suit this unique resource position and the key factors that ensures thorium utilization in a sustainable manner is of course uh, adoption of closed fuel cycle which has been already done and the use of breeder reactors which is also a precondition and then of course uh, development of uh, self-sustaining thorium based reactors which may be the third stage reactor. Well, a lot has been talked about the three-stage uh, Indian nuclear power program. I think most of you are familiar, but once again, you know, stage one means natural uranium fuel pressure tube type heavy water reactors. And uh, the spent fuel from these reactors is reprocessed to obtain plutonium and depleted uranium, which goes to the second stage, basically plutonium fuel fast breeder reactors. And during the later part of this uh, fast breeder reactor program, and especially when the natural uranium reserve is uh, fully depleted, we switch to thorium and then start producing an inventory of U-233. And later on, we may switch to what we call a self-sustainable thorium-based system, and which is uh, nothing but a reactor which begins with uh, U-233 fuel and later on sustains only on thorium. Well, large-scale utilization of thorium is expected in third stage, and this is the status of the first stage. Uh, First stage is well established and Nuclear Power Corporation is uh, the utility which is operating all these uh, reactors of the first stage 
about 18 pressure tube type heavy water reactors are under operation and 4 into 700 megawatt electric are under advanced stage of construction. More are under planning and construction. In addition, we could also tap on the spent fuel of the light water reactors uh, for the plutonium that we need. Well, second stage is uh, underway. IGCAR Kalpakam is established to focus on fast breeder reactor program. Already a fast breeder test reactor is operating at Kalpakam since 1985. And the 500 megawatt fast prototype fast breeder reactor is in its final stages of construction. A fast reactor fuel cycle facility is also under construction at Kalpakam. And Bhavani, like uh, NPCIL, is the organization which is to initiate work on this uh, commercial fast breeder reactors. R&D on metallic fuels is also in an advanced stage to reduce uh, the doubling time. Well, third stage, we can say the ground is being prepared. Uh, the U U233 obtained from the fast breeder reactors of the second stage. Uh, is expected to be used in self-sustaining reactors and will require only thorium feed, just as I mentioned. And technology established uh, for all aspects of thorium fuel cycle, albeit on a laboratory scale. A few U233-based research reactors uh, has been established in Bark. At the moment, only one of them is operating but this is at Kalpakam, Kamini. HWR is designed and developed for industrial scale technology demonstration of thorium. And uh, the critical facility for HWR and several large scale test facilities have already been established. Well, molten salt breeder reactor seems to be the most suitable candidate for the self-sustaining third stage for electricity generation as well as hydrogen generation. <coughs> well, India has uh, one of the largest uh, resources of thorium uh, in the form of beach sands and about 11.93 million tons of monocyte has been already identified which has about 1 million tons of thoria. And work has been carried out on all aspects, including mining, ore conversion, fuel fabrication, radiation reactors, reprocessing, refabrication, and waste management. Well, <coughs> fuel has been fabricated for the J-roads of Cyrus and uh, also for the Drua reactor. And fuel bundles for the Pressurized heavy water reactor has also been fabricated and also for the FPTR as a, for use as a blanket. Irradiation has been completed in Cyrus, Drua, as well as it, it has been used during the initial flux flattening of the PHWR. It has been used in FPTR blanket as well as uh, Experimental thoria based MOX fuel pins has also been irradiated. The J roads which was irradiated in Cyrus has been reprocessed both at Bark and IGCAR. And PSWR thoria bundles has we just started reprocessing in the new facility which we call the power reactor thorium reprocessing facility. Well, utilization of U-233, now we have only this research reactor Kamini which uses the plate type fuel and irradiation of uh, PFPR test fuel pins uh, with U-233 has also been run in FPTR. Well, this uh, shows the monocyte 
uh, mining and the processing plant at uh, Oscom, which is in Orissa, and the uh, thorium extraction laboratory. So, several tons of uh, nuclear grade thoria has already been produced. Also, thoria pellets have been fabricated, and these pellets have been used to assemble the fuel bundles, and these bundles have been used in about eight reactors during the initial core flux flattening. And some of these bundles have seen burn up as high as 12 gigawatt day per ton and bundle power as high as 400 kilowatt. Well, <coughs> We did radiations of uh, MOX fuel pins of the BWR design, the PHWR design, as well as the HWR design. And post radiation examination of many of these have been carried out to validate the predicted uranium isotopic distributions, as well as uh, fusion product composition for this uh, computer course that has been generated for this purpose. And then examinations showed the better performance characteristics of thoria based fuels, which was uh, mentioned in the earlier lecture by Dr. Sima. Well, engineering scale facilities have also been established for reprocessing of uh, irradiated bundles, UTSF. Uh, is an old facility which was used to reprocess the research reactor irradiated fuel. And the power reactor thoria reprocessing facility was established in this year, in January 2015. And uh, those bundles that are irradiated in the pressure tube type heavy water reactors has been reprocessed here. A view of the plant is here. Well, experience with the U233 fuel that has been obtained after reprocessing, we have uh, had this reactor long back. The first one to use U233 was a uh, homogeneous reactor using uranyl nitrate solution. The second one used U233 aluminum dispersion plate type fuel, and uh, this experiments really helped us to design this uh, core for the Kamini reactor, which is uh, presently operating at uh, Kalpakam, and uh, is the only op reactor of its kind now in the world. And fuel radi irradiation testing in FPTR, uh, we have been using U233 plus depleted uranium plus PU MOX, and this is supposed to be used in PFPR in future, and this has also been irradiated. Well, coming to the thorium based advanced reactors, uh, well, as per Indian uh, study, premature deployment of thorium in the Indian program leads to suboptimal use of the available resources. And therefore, it is necessary to build up a significant level of nuclear generation capacity and fissile material before launching thorium fuel cycle in the third stage. Incorporation of the thorium in the blankets of metallic fuel fast breeder reactors uh, when significant fast breeder capacity is built up. And U-233 formed in these uh, fast breeder reactors could drive self-sustaining molten salt reactors. Also, they could be used to run fast breeder reactors. Thorium-based uh, self-sustaining reactors are, as of now, expected to be deployed beyond 2070. However, a large amount of technology development is uh, required. and. Uh, 
So, we are here with uh, the advanced heavy water reactor, which is supposed to demonstrate industrial scale technologies for thorium utilization. Well, this uh, slide shows that uh, say the indigenous resources, if you use uh, only in the pressure tube type heavy water reactor program, then we can build up an install capacity of about 10 gigawatt. And if we reprocess the spent fuel and use the plutonium as well as the depleted uranium in the fast breeder reactors, then this uh, install capacity can be built up to as uh, 250 gigawatt. And further enhancement can be obtained by switching to thorium. And detailed calculations shows that thorium can be deployed on a large scale about three decades after the introduction of fast period reactors with uh, short doubling time. Well, advanced hay water reactor is being set up as a technology demonstration reactor, keeping in view the long-term deployment of thorium-based reactors in the third stage. It's based on a relatively mature technology of solid fuel-based water-cooled reactor system. And it will be an important step in achieving long-term sustainab sustainability with thorium in uh, molten salt reactors as well as uh, accelerator-driven systems. The reactor design also addresses many key issues required for sustainable development of nuclear energy like enhanced safety, proliferation, pro proliferation resistance, minimize uh, waste burden. The minor actinides uh, formation is much less if you use uh, thorium and uh, maximize resource utilization. Well, not only in India, there are many other countries are also looking at uh, thorium utilization in various type of reactors. So, can do a CWR is one of them. There is this uh, RBWR, which is in the United States, uh, and the APR 14000 Republic of Korea, and again PWR. Also, these are the Indian studies. Interestingly, the fraction of power from thorium that is reported is much larger. If you use uh, plutonium in plutonium thorium based uh, fuel in ASWR, whereas if you use LEU, of course, it is still the largest uh, cons comparing with BWR and PWR but it is uh, typically about 38%. Well, it's a ASWR is a vertical pressure tube type reactor cooled by boiling light water and moderated by heavy water. And it uses uh, dual marks of uranium-233 thorium as well as uh, plutonium thorium marks. And some of the design objectives include, of course, thorium utilization, incorporation of uh, extensive passive safety systems, and uh, plant location in a populated area, which means uh, this reactor will have practically no requirement of emergency planning in public domain and of course uh, design life of uh, 100 years. These are some of the test facilities that has been set up for ASWR. It includes a large number of separate effect test facilities and uh, about three integral test facilities including a critical facility for ASWR for physics experiments and there were this is uh, what we call the integral test loop, which was uh, earlier there in this building, which is now replaced by ITL2. And uh, this facility, 
the facility for proving advanced reactor thermal hydraulics known as PARTH established at R&D Center Tarapur. We will also have an integral test facility, the parallel uh, a two loop system which will be there at Tarapur and it will also test the fueling machine, prototype fueling machine. Well, <coughs> SWR uses closed fuel cycle to maximize uh, energy ge uh, power generation from thoria and uh, recycling of uh, self generated U233 and thoria and uh, external fissile feed of plutonium. Those of you who are not familiar with uh, HWR fuel bundle, it uses two inner rings which is thorium plutonium MOX whereas the outer ring is thorium U233 MOX and this uh, shows the fuel cycle. <coughs> the HWR fuel cycle facility should be co-located with the plant itself so that uh, the fuel fabrication, reprocessing and waste management can be done at the same site. Because of the presence of uh, U-232 in uh, U-233, we will have to do some kind of a, you know, fabrication of the fuel in shielded glove box types of facilities. Not only uh, uh, the SWR is almost fully developed and we are just waiting for the launch of SWR, but we are also looking at uh, what we call an economic model which could be much uh, cheaper than what is already there. So what we propose to do is uh, to enhance the power so that the unit energy cost is uh, reduced and also a diverse cooling system to eliminate hydrogen generation as well as fuel melt in case of uh, severe accidents. And it also proposes to use air cool condensers so that it could be located in desert sites. We also propose to use uh, solar power for feed water heating as well as uh, demineralized water production which is required for the plant. And then of course power generation from decay heat by two methods. One of course is uh, use of uh, thermoelectric generators. Uh, this will be usually charging the batteries and also we have uh, an, an another option to use solar PV. Passive shutdown in case of wired shutdown system failure and then of course uh, wireless transmission of significant parameters to the back, backup control room. Well, we said uh, ASWR needs U233. We have looked at uh, some of the strategies for generation of U233. Uh, although ASWR can be started initially with uh, plutonium and depleted uranium MOX alone, but later on you have to have a gradual transition which is supposed to take place about 15 to 20 years and this transition period can be significantly reduced if you start producing U-233. In addition, the U-233 generator can also be used to set up uh, experimental as well as uh, prototype molten salt reactors to obtain prior uh, to obtain operating experience prior to their large scale deployment. <coughs> well, studies have been uh, done for the U23 generation for five different cases in PHWRs both in 220 megawatt electric as well as uh, 540 megawatt electric. Now, if you use just uh, two thoria bundles in the peripheral channels of uh, 220, you could generate about 4 kg per year 
of u to 33 in 220, whereas it will be 9 kg here. On the other hand, if you use every alternate bundle with thoria as well as uh, slightly enriched uranium bundles in the entire reactor core, then this is the amount that we can generate. If you switch to thorium plus plutonium mox fuel bundles in the entire uh, PHWR core, then you can generate 150 kg per year in 220 and 340 kg per year in case of 540. If you are uh, loading the entire core with uh, fuel bundles having the central pin thoria and the remaining pin slightly enriched uh, uranium pins, then this will be 8 kg and 12 kg. And if you switch to that another case where the entire core is loaded with uh, fuel bundles having the central 7 pins, that is the central pin plus the 6 surrounding pins and the remaining pins with uh, slight, slightly enriched uranium, then this is the generation of U-233 that we can obtain. The study has also been done for the FOST reactors. In case of FPTR, uh, if we load the Toria bundles in only ring 9 to 12, then we generate about 23 kgs in 5 full power years. Whereas uh, in the rings from 6 to 12, if you load thoria bundles, then we can get about 46 kg. Well, if we go to PFPR and only the radial blankets, then we generate about 105 kg per year. And including, if you also include axial blanket, then you can get another additional 38 kg per year. <coughs> well, this uh, basically shows that, you know, the transition period, which is uh, normally about 15 to 20 years, can be reduced as much as by 10 years, have an initial inventory of uh, 200 kg of uh, U-233. And coming to thorium fuel cycles for ASWR, well, <coughs> we did mention that reprocessing has been done very recently uh, in this uh, power reactor thorium reprocessing facility. Before we switch to this, you know, lab scale simulation studies were carried out to evolve the process for reprocessing. And this PRTRF, which is operational, will provide vital experience and inputs for optimization of the process parameters and equipments. Well, the reprocessed U-233 has a problem in the sense it has uh, trace quantities of uh, U-232 and uh, U-232 has a half-life of 68 years and it decays into thorium into radium and many others and ultimately the bismuth and thallium you know are the daughter products of uh, u233 which are high gamma emitters and as a result the activity of uh, reprocessed u233 keeps on building up with time to tell you an example, the recently uh, reprocessed U-233, you know, the immediately after reprocessing, the field was of the order of 2 MR. And after three months, the field was about 60 R. So this has a significant bearing on the fuel fabrication. So we need automation as well as remote fuel fabrication for U-233 based uh, fuel. 
Well, there were several studies on waste management, and I am sure there is going to be another talk by uh, Mr. Vatil later on in this conference. And uh, all that I must, I want to say is, well, most of the problems of uh, reprocessing related to thorium fuel is more or less addressed. And uh, the partitioning, actinide partitioning, is not expected to be significantly different from whatever <coughs> we have done for the uranium-based fuel. Now coming to this uh, thorium-based sustainable reactor systems that we are working on, well, we did work on uh, this molten salt reactor systems jointly with the Oak Ridge National Lab in the 70s. So this work has been restarted. The molten salt breeder reactors is an attractive proposition for India, especially for thorium utilization because of the inherent advantages it uh, offers. One of them is uh, that breeding is possible over a wide neutron spectrum. And you can do what we call the self-sustaining thorium reactor with minimal fissile inventory. Online fission product removal and uh, protactinium separation helps in neutron economy and helps in improving the breeding. Low pressure, low pressure systems due to the high boiling point. And uh, these molten salts do not have the problem of uh, hydrogen formation, as well as the molten salt is already molten. The core is already molten, so there is no question of core melt. The last, but this is very important for uh, molten salt systems. You know, there is practically no need for a solid fuel uh, fabrication plant. And this is going to be a chemical plant, which is less complicated. And that's one of the most significant advantages of switching to thorium-based, uh, the, uh, the molten salt-based reactors. Conceptual designs are in progress. Uh, both uh, pool type and uh, loop type designs are proposed. And <coughs> coming to some of the studies that we are carrying on on the molten salt reactor front, there are uh, neutron transport codes, uh, you know, closely coupled, say, most of the say, uh, neutron codes which we have. Uh, do not account for the fuel movement. So this code will actually account for the fuel movement. And also, in combination with CFD codes, this will have the capability to analyze the molten salt reactor system completely, including the, you know, we have to also account for online reprocessing, which is another thing being developed, another uh, feature that which, which are being developed. And large scale salt preparation and purification. Many of the other groups like the chemistry division is involved in this. And physical property and characterization of uh, uh, molten salts. Materials for use with molten salts and their uh, caudal qualifications, so we need to develop these materials. And both batch mode and offline reprocessing method without requiring cooling of fuel salt. This is uh, also being uh, studied by the recycle group. And instrumentation for operation high temperature, high radiation, molten salt environment. This is being done in our place itself and of course online chemistry. Some of the facilities uh, for preparation of uh, and purification of this molten salt, fluoride salts, natural circulation facilities, material compatibility test facilities, and uh, these are some of the thermohydraulic test facilities which have been set up 
for studying the natural circulation behavior of uh, the fuel salt, the blanket salt, and uh, there are many other facilities are also under. Well, I'll just give one slide, you know, on this accelerator driven subcritical reactor system which is being developed for thorium utilization as well as for transmutation of nuclear waste. We follow a two-stage process uh, in development of this high current, high energy proton accelerator. Stage one is uh, the 30 milliampere, uh, 20 MeV LINAC injector, which we call the LEHIPA, and the stage two. The status is, uh, you know, most of the components required for this is being uh, tested, developed, along with uh, lead bismuth eutetic thermal hydraulic test facilities for their uh, thermal hydraulic validation. And uh, a subcritical test facility has also been established for the reactor physics studies on. These are some of the studies on thorium based high temperature reactors. Essentially, these are proposed for hydrogen generation. Dr. Vijan, can you conclude yeah. in five minutes? So some of these uh, test facilities which we have established, the important thing is a kilo temperature LBE loop which can operate up to 1100 degrees centigrade, already operating since one year. Well, to conclude, the three-stage Indian nuclear power program is a long-term program devised to utilize the large thorium resources in the country. And a brief overview of this was given along with the current status of the program. India has developed uh, technology for all aspects of uh, thorium utilization. And industrial scale technology demonstration is expected to be started with the launch of ASWR. The challenges of thorium fuel cycle has been described, and the molten salt breeder reactor seems to be the most eligible candidate for the self-sustainable thorium reactor. The conceptual design of uh, IMSBR is uh, briefly described, along with its advantages and challenges. And the work on STRs is also briefly touched. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Vijayan, for a full overview of the Indian nuclear power program involving thorium. Are there any questions? Yes, please. Look from the Durpal. Two very short questions. Have you done any transient testing on your segmented fuel rods with your uranium fuel, thorium fuel? I think I didn't. If you hear. done transient testing on fuel segmented rods in maybe power reactors, or, or haven't you done these kind of irradiations yet? Irradiation. Yes, but transient testing, going to You're high. Asking uh, about yeah, yeah. High transient power irradiation reactors. in power reactors. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, in the power reactors during the, you know, these bundles were loaded during the initial stages itself. Uh, so it has seen all transients okay. that the reactor undergoes. However, the specific effect of uh, transients, I think we haven't really studied that part. But apparently, the reactor has uh, the bundles have been there up to about 12, 12 gigawatt days per ton, and the average burn up is uh, only six gigawatt six to seven gigawatt days per ton. So apparently there is uh, no, I mean, we, we haven't got any issues with these bundles. May I still one question? Yeah, quickly. Uh, a, a very quick one. On your uh, presentation, you saw that for the thorium uranium-233 MOX fuel that you had for different fabrication technologies, a partially or a fully shielded fabrication plant. Yeah. Yeah. Could you disclose a little bit more why and what's the difference between partially and fully shielded? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> if you are uh, 
fabricating LEU thorium. LEU thorium bundles, there is no issue. So that was uh, the. Whereas if it is uh, thorium uh, U233, and because of the presence of uh, that uh, bismuth as well as thallium, which are high gamma emitters, the field is quite high, and we have to do it in shielded uh, glove boxes, and uh, it has to be done uh, by remote fabrication. Okay. On the other hand, uh, in certain cases, you know, if you are generating fuel, maybe in uh, fast breeder reactors, uh, where at least the physics calculation so shows that the amount of U-230 could be of the order of 10 ppm, whereas uh, for PHWR, you know, it could be as high as 160 or 200, or some calculations even show 500 ppm. So those 10 ppm ones could be uh, most probably done in a much relaxed manner. Thank you. In the back there, yeah. Thank you very much for, for the presentation. You mentioned that for the advanced heavy water reactor, there is no requirement for emergency preparedness and response. Uh, should we understand that there is no risk of off-site contamination from a nuclear accident from the reactor? Yeah. See, if you can completely ensure that under any accidental scenarios that there is no activity release outside the plant boundary, that's what we are aiming at. And uh, in the morning, Dr. R. K. Sina did show that, you know, if you have a Fukushima type of accident in the current PHWR, say uh, in, in the uh, advanced heavy water reactor, then you have about 110 days, which is a long time. Maybe you can go on a world tour and that too on a bicycle and come back and the reactor would be safe. So this is uh, the, the idea is, you know, because it is a passive, extensive use of passive, uh, of, uh, passive systems which helps in maintaining this uh, system in a safe manner for a long duration. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, you made uh, just one, Jagannathan. Sir. I'll come back to you. Uh, there was a very interesting table on uh, getting the uh, using the existing uh, uh, PHWRs for getting U233. Uh, there, I think, uh, the duration over which those quantities are to producible, that uh, will be of interest. That is over what kind of time scale. And the second is uh, kind of, you know, the disturbance that we will be causing to normal fuel management, et cetera, when we want to produce this uranium. That also will be of interest. Yeah, I think. Uh the second point is very interesting. Not, you know, I, I just uh, <coughs> concentrated on how to produce U-233, and I did not uh, mention its effect on the PHWR fuel cycle. And that's a valid point. Uh, that doesn't mean, see, there are, uh, there are uh, five options. So the, the option which is most suitable for you is to be selected. If you take the first option, you know, which produces just 4 kg per year of U-233 in a PHWR-220, that doesn't need any modification, neither in the, um, in the uh, system or we can straight away load it. There is no, absolutely no issue about it. But the other things, they have problems, you know, there are in certain cases, you have to check whether your shutdown margins are affected and whether they are there. Thank you. Last question, Dr. Badras. Yeah. I have a question about the introduction of uh, uh, fast reactors. 
you know, you are saying that you have to use plutonium uranium oxide for a number of years before you trans go to the U-233 system. Uh, but you also know that for plutonium uranium system, you have safety issues. You have high positive sodium void coefficient, which can be reduced considerably by use of thorium. I'm going to speak about that, that you have to really, to license these reactors, you probably should use thorium early rather than late in the, in the, in the time span you're talking about. Yeah, uh, the study which uh, here we showed is assuming that only the indigenous resources are used. So, the point which you are talking about, you know, introdu introducing thorium in the early stages. See, we did these uh, calculations. If you, uh, of course, I didn't show these uh, slides, but I think uh, Dr. Sina showed them in the morning. So, if you introduce uh, thorium much early, then the the install capacity that we will reach is going to be much less. So that is plutonium is produced by the by the PHWRs. Yeah. <coughs> plutonium is uh, being produced but in fast reactor we are using plutonium plus uh, depleted uranium. But I'm, I'm saying you should use plutonium and thorium. Yeah, so see there is, uh, you know, this depleted uranium has a lot of U-238 which uh, contributes to fast fission, you know, in, in a fast fission spectrum. So that part we are losing if you are putting thorium. So the buildup of uh, U-233 which we can get would be somewhat I mean, significantly reduced. That's what uh, our study shows. We can compare. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you should discuss that. Yeah. Okay, with that, uh, we bring uh, this presentation to a close. Uh, and let me use this opportunity to...